Come on, Mr. Salazar, breathe. That's California air. <laughs> Go east for civilization, Senator. West for air. Something like that. <laughs> Put it over to the side. Take it easy, Senator. They work for us. They're here to welcome you. Sorry, Senator, I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, Nick, it's, it's not your fault. You see, there's been a threat, a threat on my life. No more surprises, Mr. Barkley, please. Judd. Judd, you shouldn't have. Mother, it's so lovely. She's lovely. Thank you. You know, I was just about to say it's good to be back home. And it's true. I almost feel as though California were my home. Now pour me some of that good California wine. The good California wine we ship back east. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Senator. Senator! Senators live in Washington, D.C. Here it's Judd. I won't even accept a Mr. Rosa. Just Judd. Judd. Mrs. Barkley, if the Senator's room is ready. Oh, of course. You must be very tired after such a long trip. Me? Tired? Show me a dragon to slay, a mountain to climb. I'll show you a staircase to climb. Or do, would you please show the gentleman to his room? Be a pleasure. Thank you. Mr. Salazar, perhaps you'd like to rest before dinner? Uh, perhaps later. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment? Yes. That ranch hand who was just here, what's his name? Uh oh, uh, Walt Tompkins or Thompson or something like that. I'm afraid something like that isn't good enough. I'd appreciate if you'd find out everything you can about him and about every other worker on the ranch. Well, may I ask why? Please understand. A man like the senator, wherever he goes, whatever he does, the nature of his office, his responsibilities, goes with him. They follow him. But that isn't all that follows him. Personal enemies, threats against his life. There is right now a threat against the senator's life. And we have reason to believe this time there'll be an attempted assassination. Oh, that's difficult to believe. Judd is so revered, so loved. And hated and feared, like all men in positions of power. Think of his life. A gunman, a town tamer, a lawman, United States Marshal. Think of the men that he has caused to be arrested the dozens that have died under his guns. <laughs> Not so easy being a living legend, is it? I advised him against this trip. He insisted. They're his best friends. 
He loves you. I think he feels safe with you. I hope and pray he's right, because his life is in your hands. Now, if you will show me to my room. Certainly. Judd, that's enough. Yes, I guess I'm getting a little carried away. Well, just carry enough to heat the coffee. You know, for the first time in years, right here, right now, I feel young again. I'm glad I came, Victoria. I'll second that motion. Salazar and some of my advisors tried to talk me out of it. I wouldn't be talked. No, sir, I had to get right back here, right where it all began. Get a chance to breathe. Begin to renew myself. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, because you never looked better in your whole life. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Even if it's not true. It is true. Well, I'd hate to have to ride out after the Manville gang tonight to prove it. Well, thanks to you, there's no Manville gang to ride after tonight or any other night. You thank me. Heaven knows how many. <coughs> oh, Judd, be careful. <coughs> mm. Ah. If I had choked, my enemies would award you the Medal of Honor, and that chicken bone would be enshrined in the National Archives. <laughs> Did you see him? Yes. The same man, Thompson Tompkins. Well, I couldn't tell not from this distance. Same man. Evening, Walt. Evening. Well, looks like the boys went off and left you all by your lonesome, huh? It's Saturday night. You know how that goes. Uh-huh. You're, uh, quite a loner, aren't you, Walt? Well, that's my privilege now. Yet for a man who likes his privacy, uh, you get around quite a bit, don't you? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, you got any questions, you far away. I haven't got anything to hide. You were out on the East Range this afternoon, weren't you? Look, you know where I was. I was out collecting strays on the North Ridge. Well, why are you out on the East Range? Did you see the senator and my mother? Look, I told you where. Well, Heath sent me riding back here. I may have cut across the East Range. I don't rightly recall. Walt, I asked you while you were out on the East Range if you saw the senator or my mother. Now, that's a very simple question, isn't it? Well, maybe I did. What does that prove? Nothing. Yes.
was down there. Started climbing up, heard me coming, and ran off. So check the bunkhouse, see if anyone's missing. Well, that won't be necessary, Jared. It's that same man, Tompkins. I saw him riding out. At least now we know for sure. We'll leave in the morning. No. He's only one of them. There may be many more. In Washington, we're protected. I say we're staying. No assassin is going to drive me out. We're staying. All right, all right. Ride into town. Make yourself a target for every... All right. Go. But at least let me go with you. Nope. I promise you, I won't interfere with your pleasure. Part of my pleasure is to be left alone. Uh, can tickle. I heard that. Next time, make it in English loud and clear. You're stubborn. I don't know what I'm going to That's do. That's better. Much better. <laughs> Mr. Barkley, are you going into town? Yeah, I need a lift. Thank you. Mr. Senator, it seems like you have a ride into town. Thank you, Salazar. All right, Heath, let's go. Take about an hour to load the wagon. Oh, take as long as you like. Longer. I'll manage to amuse myself. Pull up a chair or take a walk. I don't like spectators. Not unless they look like Pearl here. I'll consider that an invitation. That's a senator. Ted Ropes. The name of the game is Five Card Stud. The deal's to you. Senator. Table stakes. Wait till I tell my wife. It sure is an honor, sir. It's Sure is. Here, bet. Inside straight all day. Looks like you finally filled it, eh, Senator? Shut up and play! Well, I'll see and uh, raise you 50.
Honey, would you hear me a refill on this? Yes, Senator. Plenty of time, Senator. Plenty of time. Your little inside straight looking right down the throat of my full house. I know what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like a full house to me. For that matter, that doesn't look like any straight to me. But, uh, we wouldn't try to bluff each other now, would we? Would we? Dude. <laughs> Dude. You're from the East, aren't you? Are all gamblers from the East called Dude? Look, I'm from Kansas. My name is Frank Keller. It's 50 to you. I know what it is to me! I know what you said is your name. I still say it's dude. Call. Ah, bottle of whiskey! What's your name? Your name! You talking to me, mister? Challenging a blind man. Well, you've been under a lot of pressure, Senator. Oh, I guess so. Acting like a fool who sees ghosts all around him. Blind man. It was said of Judd Robeson that he could out ride out, shoot out, fight out, drink any six men north or south of the Mason-Dixon line. I'm not ashamed of what I was, what I did, what I had to do. I'm not ashamed. It's time to put guns aside. There's more important things to do now. I'm a senator. A United States senator. I played poker and lost to a man who says his name is Frank Keller. Yes, sir. What was his name? St. Louis, about 12, 15 years ago. A gambler, dapper, dude, dude. Dude Madden? Madden, that's it. What did he look like? Tall man, big hands, deep set eyes, and that mouth. Grin, taunting. Suddenly I can see him. I can see him almost like it was yesterday. First thing tomorrow, I'll ride into town and have the sheriff check on Keller. You may have some information on him already. Tomorrow morning? First thing. Good night, Senator. Maybe two. 
too late. Senator, we're about to shut down. Whiskey. Can I buy you a drink, Senator? I'd be proud to. Oh, some other time. Thanks. That uh, gentleman I played cards with this afternoon. Uh, Keller. Keller, yes, of course. Keller, that's what he calls himself. Plays a pretty good game. At least I think he plays a pretty good game, you know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's played a hand or two in his time, I'll wager. How long has he been hereabouts? Just a few weeks. Any idea where he lives? The hotel, right across the street. You looking to bend another deck with him? Could be. Well, you'll find him ready. You think so? But no so. As a matter of fact, he said, if you want another crack at him, he'll be ready. Anyway, uh, the minute Senator Robes will come in the saloon tonight, I knew there was a shooting in the air. How'd you know that? How'd I know? <laughs> I'll tell you how come I knowed. Judge Robeson's the fastest gun I've ever seen. Maybe the fastest gun of his time. I know, because I seen him. I seen him challenged once in Abilene, Kansas. He, uh, Judd, he tried to buy out. But this punk kid wouldn't let up. And I seen this look come into Judge's eye. And I said to myself, that kid's done talked himself to death. Now, 15, 16 years later, tonight, I seen that same look come into Judge's eye. A few minutes later, Frank Keller was dead. Charlie, uh, did you actually see the shooting? You blame right I seen it. I come to the top of them steps, took a peek down the corridor. I seen Frank Keller come out of that door into the corridor. Had his gun in his hand, carried it. He was caught, ready to fire. And Judge, he had to clear his holster first, take aim and then fire. But he did it, you get it? He did it all before Frank Keller got off a shot. Not one shot. It was, it was the most fantastical thing I ever seen. Oh, he's the best. Best there ever was. And I seen him in action twice. 
Jared, anything you want to ask him? No, I don't think so, Sheriff. No, that'll be all, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. Senator? Miss? Per Pearl Adams. I, I work at Marty's saloon. Kind of uh, wait tables. I know where you work, Miss. Now, what happened tonight as you witnessed it? Well, Frank, uh, I, I mean, Mr. Keller, he invited me up to his room for a drink. There's nothing wrong in that, is there? No. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be nervous about, Miss Adams. I know that. It's just that, well, everything happened so fast. I mean, well, there was a knock on the door, and then Frank went out into the hall. Mr. Hodges said Keller came out of the room gun drawn. Gun drawn? Yes, you said earlier that from the way Frank left the room, you just knew that there was going to be trouble. Now, wasn't that because he was carrying a gun? Is that what he said? That, that Frank was carrying a gun? I, I mean... Somebody saw Frank carrying a gun? Mm hmm Well, then I, I guess that's the way it was. I mean, I, I was scared. Oh, I was just so scared. One minute we were just sitting there, and the next he was, he was lying out there in the hall. I was just so scared. I think we understand. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can go now, Miss Adams. I'm sorry to have to get you out of bed, Jared, but I felt the need of a good lawyer and a good friend. You qualify on both counts. I don't think you'll be needing a lawyer, Senator. We have an eyewitness account of what happened. Then for the time being, that'll have to suffice. Oh, Mr. Salazar, I can answer a few questions. Not until you've checked with Washington, sir. These matters concern not only you personally, but perhaps the national security. All right, gentlemen, I say this, and it'll have to do for now. Unless Washington absolutely forbids it, there will be a public inquest. Oh, I'm sure that won't be necessary, Senator. I insist on it. After all, my office does not give me the prerogative to go out and shoot people and sweep the facts and the body under a carpet as if neither were of any import. A human being is dead. The American people are entitled to know why. Well, I don't think the sheriff had any intention of sweeping anything under the carpet, Judd. Very well, we're in complete agreement. Right now, and this will be strictly between us gentlemen, I can say with reasonable certainty that Mr. Keller, not his right name, incidentally, was acting for certain people who were opposed to legislation I have recently introduced. You're saying then that he was a paid assassin? That's what I'm saying. And in a day or two, I'll be able to prove it. Sir. If somebody's out to kill you, they may have hired more than one man. No, they have. Two for certain, Jared, that ranch hand, whatever he calls himself. Walt Tompkins, Sheriff. I'll have one of my deputies right back with you, Senator. Well, thank you, Sheriff. I don't think that'll be necessary. One assassination attempt an evening is all we can expect. I don't believe there'll be any more trouble. Well, good night. And it's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. Well, under the circumstances, I wish I could say the same thing. <laughs> You're a good man. The country needs more like you. Well, thank you, sir. Sheriff, I ask you to check out all people with criminal records. Oh, I have some of that information over in my office, Mr. Salazar. If you'd care to look at it. Thank you very much. I'll see you back at the house, Senator. Night, Jared. Sheriff. It's been quite an evening. That it has. You'll see the sun come up on the way back. The whole thing seems so incredible, doesn't it, Judd? I know it sounds incredible, but in big business, politics, millions of dollars at stake, human lives at stake, wars hanging in the balance, to hire a man to kill a senator is child's play. Judd, if you suspected that Keller was an assassin, wouldn't it have been wiser to warn the sheriff to keep an eye on him? I guess I'm used to doing things myself. Jared, I thought if I could talk to him, sound him out, I might be able to... Well, you know what happened. Came out of his room with his gun drawn and... Yeah. Well, we better get back to the house. I think you can use some rest.
That's right. I see. Well, uh, may I? Tell me, does the district attorney know about this? The district attorney knows nothing and wants to know even less. Uh, you'll forgive me, but what's that supposed to mean? Oh, come off it, Mr. Barkley. You're the senator's lawyer, his friend. You're part of it. Part of what? Never mind. I have to go. Uh, just a minute, young lady. I ask you a question, and I'd like an answer. Part of what? I want you to understand something. I may be the senator's defense attorney, but both the senator and I want nothing but the truth to come out in that court. So if you know anything, anything at all, to either deny or corroborate that defense, I'd Which like to... Which was that Frank had a gun, that he was waiting up there in the dark to ambush the senator, that some people paid him to do the job? What a joke, Mr. Barkley. What a stupid joke. Ask anybody who knows Frank Keller. He never carried a gun. Never. Can you prove that? I spent enough time with him that I can prove more than that. Besides, I was there when it happened. Remember, Mr. Barkley? Go on. I, I was in the room. I didn't see a thing. You realize I can have the district attorney subpoena you, force you to come back here and testify. Testify to what, Mr. Barkley? That I could see through a closed door into the hall? Testify to what? No matter what I say, it wouldn't matter. People already made up their mind. By the time you and the district attorney finished questioning me, well, about my line of work, whether I ever spent any time in jail, do you think there'd be anybody taking my word? Come on, Mr. Barkley. I'd probably wind up in jail for perjury. I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley. <laughs> You know the whole story, Counselor. In fact, by now, everyone in the entire state knows the whole story. Kind of makes you feel good, doesn't it, Hodges? Getting your name in the newspaper? Yeah. <laughs> Just like being a celebrity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not that I care. I never looked to be in a public eye. Oh, no. But you know what interests me? What you told the sheriff. You said that you could just see there was going to be a killing by the look in Judd's eye. That's right. <laughs> Most men I know would have run away from trouble like that. Not right into the teeth of it. <laughs> a man shoots as straight as Judd Ropes, and not much danger of hitting poor little old me. And besides which, you made darn sure you weren't in the line of fire, right? All yeah, right. <laughs> Keller's room's around the bend in the corner. Man can hardly get hit standing near the stairway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no hero, that's for sure. Can't get hit. Can't see around that bend, either. What are you driving at? Just this, Hodges. You never saw Keller coming out of his room, and you never saw him holding a gun, either. Do you know why? Because he didn't have one, did he? Did he, Hodges? I promise you a complete investigation of the mineral rights in this area will be undertaken. Well, that's fine. Close it off with a farm ending. Thank you for your interest in better government, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. Sorry, Jared, but some of these letters have to be taken care of. I understand. That's if I can stay awake that long. You know, your mother took me for a ride today and really put me through my paces. Don't be so sober, Jared. Keller's girl is, by your own admission, a lady of slightly ill repute. That's true. But what about our eyewitness, Hodges? Hodges, I never put much faith in his testimony from the first. He's a publicity seeker. I know the type well. He couldn't possibly have seen Keller's gun. But I saw it. All right, Judd. Let's put aside what Hodges said, what the girl said. How am I to prove that there was a gun? 
Jared. Before the sheriff got there, how many people? Guests of the hotel townspeople could have picked up that gun. A souvenir. Something to leave the grandchildren. That's possible. Let's say for the moment even probable. It still doesn't change the fact that the girl said Keller never cared. While we're at it, let's get one thing straight. His name was not Keller. I'm afraid it was, Judd. He was checked out thoroughly. He was born Frank Donald Keller, and he died Frank Keller. He was an orphan. And there's no indication that either he or any member of his adopted family ever ran afoul of you in any way. I was sure, absolutely certain, somewhere along the line, that man had a personal grudge against me. His eyes, the way he moved, reminded me of Duke Madden. Right, Salazar? That's right. Bet your life that's right. Now listen to me, Jared Barkley, and listen good. I don't care what you found out with your checking. It wasn't I who did the checking, Judd. It was the district attorney. Well, you tell the district attorney to check his facts again, because I'll bet my intuition against his facts any day in the week and twice on Sunday. And with Salazar on top of the package, well, that, that man can remember whether somebody I arrested in Whitewater, Texas in 1855 had a ward on his nose. And if he had one, whether it was on the tip or on the side. Neither. It happened to be in the middle of his forehead. <laughs> I think I'll turn in. Jed, can I see you a minute? Excuse me, John. You better get some sleep yourself, Jared. Because tonight it sounded like my lawyer is trying to get me hung. What'd you send for him for? I wanted to see Nick and get my wages. You ran out without waiting to collect those wages. Why? Look, I didn't exactly run. I was run out, Mr. Barkley. What were you doing under the senator's window that night? I was just taking a walk. Just taking a walk, huh? That's right, I was just taking a walk. Look, ask any man in the bunkhouse for a fact. I don't sleep good. I never have. So once, maybe twice a night, I get up and walk around a bit. You walk around, all right. Not five minutes after the senator arrived, you walked right into the house to gawk at him. Look, I was sent to get Nick. And as for gawking at him, he's a famous man, a senator, a gunfighter, and you don't see men like him every day. Maybe. But if it's all so innocent, that still doesn't explain why you ran. And Jared and Walt's shoes taking a walk at night. Somebody takes a shot at you. Maybe we'd have run, too. Judd, in town yesterday, I saw Judd come within one second of shooting down a blind man. Look, Mr. Barkley, when I realized that Judd Robeson was shooting at me, and from the first, he'd been looking at me. Look, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, like he was sizing me up for the kill. you'd like some coffee. If you're working on the senator's case, there's some cold beef. Would you like a sandwich? Jared? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I was a thousand miles away. I brought you some coffee. Thanks. Jared, what's wrong? You've been in here all day, and, and if you don't shave pretty soon... <laughs> you know something, honey? Those pretty blue eyes of yours see a lot more than I thought. Do you want to talk about it? Not just yet. Well, if and when. I may just take you up on that. Thanks for the coffee. Good evening. Excuse me. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not a bit. Care for some coffee? Mm, thank you. A drink? A drop or two of sherry, if you have it. I think that can be arranged. I hope you haven't been laboring over the impending inquest. As a matter of fact, I was just preparing some notes. Purely academic, but uh, what sort of a case were you preparing? Why academic? 
We, the senator, that is, received a telegram from Washington this afternoon. I'm afraid that it's going to be impossible for us to remain here for the proceedings. I see. What you're telling me is that you've simply decided to cancel the inquest. I'm afraid we must, much as it pains the senator to do it. If my memory serves me, Mr. Salazar, it was the senator who asked for the inquest. As a matter of fact, he insisted on it. Mr. Barkley was a mockery at best. The facts of the case were public knowledge. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. Was it? Well, you were to be his defense attorney, Mr. Barkley. Surely you know that the killing was justifiable homicide, self-defense. It's excellent sherry, Mr. Barkley. Excellent. Thank you. Good night. Well, you're down early. I'm riding into town to see the district attorney. At this hour of the morning, what's wrong? You heard what happened about the inquest? Why, no judge's been called back to Washington. Suddenly, unexpectedly called back to Washington. And so, much to his regret, forced to cancel the inquest. I'm going to ask the district attorney to insist that he stay and face that inquest. I don't understand. Why? Mother, when Chad asked me to defend him, I had to find out certain things. Things that don't go down easily. What things? Jared, I want to know. What things? All right. I'm convinced that the man sees ghosts. Ghosts out of his past that have come back to kill him. Imaginary enemies all around him. But a man like that does have enemies, real enemies. Maybe. But Frank Keller wasn't one of them. Not nearly. But he thought Keller was an assassin. In Judd's mind, he had a reason. Yes, in his mind, he had a reason. But what if that mind is no longer capable of reason? I hope I'm wrong. But I've got to find out. Good morning. Good morning. My, that coffee smells good. Ah, Jerry, just the man I want to see. Do you have a few seconds to give to an old friend, an ex-client? I take it you're not exactly overjoyed that I'm not staying for the inquest. Well, I'm not pleased about it either, but certain things have come up. Matters involving national security. They dictate that I leave for Washington at once, and that's that. But if you're not satisfied, go to the district attorney. Have him issue a subpoena. Force me to stay. If Washington allows it, I'd thank you. Because, believe me, I have no desire to leave here under the slightest cloud. Even if it's only in your mind, Jared. I'm on my way to see him now, Judd. Good. We'll both hope he gives you satisfaction. If you'll excuse me. Well, Judd, how about some ham and eggs? No. Later. Victoria, what did he say to you? Nothing, nothing you don't already know. He just thinks you should be here for the inquest. Better that the truth comes out, no matter who gets hurt. Oh, it's, it's touching. It's touching your son's sudden, passionate dedication to the truth. Sudden Well, dedication? maybe, maybe not so sudden. I saw it coming from the beginning, his burning desire to defend me. But you wanted an inquest. You insisted on it. Brilliant. Give them credit for that, using Jared, my friend, my lawyer, in such a manner. Diabolical, but brilliant. Victoria, I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to believe it myself, but I have evidence now, hardcore evidence, Victoria, that Jared is in league against me. Judd, what are you saying? Oh. Victoria, your face. Oh, sweet, wonderful woman, I was joking. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> well, now that's settled. You know, I can almost smell that good fresh air in here. That's what I'm going to miss most when I get back to Washington, almost as much as all of you. Maybe a good hard ride. Fill these old lungs. You, uh, have my ham and eggs waiting for me, will you? Oh, Mr. Senator. Mr. Senator. You can finish packing. I'm going out for some air. Oh, but I... Some fresh air, Mr. Salazar. If you don't mind. 
course not, Mr. Sutter. Thinking about your little ride into town. Maybe. Maybe it's not in the best interest of all parties concerned. I think it is. You're trying to get me hung, boy. We both know that now, don't we? You and your friends. You've been bought out, Jared. They're in the pay of the devil. You and your big business interests, your vested interests. You'd destroy me rather than see my bill passed into law. I don't want to hurt you, Jared, but you're misguided and so dangerous. To yourself, to me, to this great country. We're old friends, Judd. You and your fellow assassins. You're in the pay of the devil. No words, no apologies can recall a Judas. Jared, it's too late. I'm not armed, Judd. It won't be as easy with me as it was with Keller. There'll be no witnesses to say I drew first. Oh, Jared. Jared. Why couldn't you have let well enough alone? I swear to you, I never believed it would come to this. I hoped and prayed that his visions, the hallucinations would pass. He was a great man. I don't believe that such a man has fallen. It wasn't easy for me watching him disintegrate before my eyes. What are you going to say to them? Just what you've told me. The truth. What I've said to you, Mr. Barkley, and what I'll say to the world are two different things. As far as I'm concerned, he was killed by one of his many enemies. Murdered by an unknown assassin. What do we gain by telling the truth? What do we gain by destroying the legend? Perhaps nothing. But we have no choice, do we? Mr. Barkley, I spent the best part of my life with him. Being with him, protecting him, it was the meaning of my life. You can't protect him anymore. He's dead. But not his legend. His legend, Mr. Salazar? Is it really that fragile that it can't bear the weight of truth? He was a great man. Do a few wrong moments in a great man's life wash away its entire meaning, everything that he was? I can't believe that. But that's a judgment we'll have to leave to history. I'll have no part in rewriting that history. You've already paid far too high a price to hide the truth.
Salazar. Breathe, that's California air. <laughs> Go east for civilization, Senator. West for air. Something like that. <laughs> Take it easy, Senator. They work for us. They're here to welcome you. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, Nick, it's, it's not your fault. You see, there's been a threat. A threat on my life. No more surprises, Mr. Barkley, please. Judd. Judd, you shouldn't have. Mother, it's so lovely. She's lovely. Thank you. You know, I was just about to say it's good to be back home. And it's true. I almost feel as though California were my home. Now pour me some of that good California wine. The good California wine we ship back east. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Senator. Senator! Senators live in Washington, D.C. Here it's Judd. I won't even accept a Mr. Rosa. Just Judd. Judd. Mrs. Barkley, if the Senator's room is ready. Oh, of course. You must be very tired after such a long trip. Me? Tired? Show me a dragon to slay, a mountain to climb. I'll show you a staircase to climb. Or do, would you please show the gentleman to his room? Be a pleasure. Thank you. Mr. Salazar, perhaps you'd like to rest before dinner? Uh, perhaps later. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment? Yes. That ranch hand who was just here, what's his name? Oh, uh, Walt Tompkins or Thompson or something like that. I'm afraid something like that isn't good enough. I'd appreciate if you'd find out everything you can about him and about every other worker on the ranch. Well, may I ask why? Please understand. A man like the senator, wherever he goes, whatever he does, the nature of his office, his responsibilities, goes with him. They follow him. But that isn't all that follows him. Personal enemies, threats against his life. There is right now a threat against the senator's life. And we have reason to believe this time there'll be an attempted assassination. Oh, that's difficult to believe. Judd is so revered, so loved. And hated and feared, like all men in positions of power. Think of his life. A gunman, a town tamer, a lawman, United States Marshal. Think of the men that he has caused to be arrested the dozens that have died under his guns. <laughs> Not so easy being a living legend, is it? I advised him against this trip. He insisted. You're his best friends. He loves you. I think he feels safe with you. I hope he... Come on, Mr. 
Mr. Salazar. Breathe, that's California air. <laughs> Go east for civilization, Senator. West for air. Something like that. Take it easy, Senator. They work for us. They're here to welcome you. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, Nick, it's, it's not your fault. You see, there's been a threat. A threat on my life. No more surprises, Mr. Barkley, please. Judd. Judd, you shouldn't have. Mother, it's so lovely. She's lovely. Thank you. You know, I was just about to say it's good to be back home. And it's true. I almost feel as though California were mine. Now pour me some of that good California wine. The good California wine we ship back east. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Senator. Senator! Senators live in Washington, D.C. Here it's Judd. I won't even accept a Mr. Rosa. Just Judd. Judd. Mrs. Barkley, if the Senator's room is ready. Oh, of course. You must be very tired after such a long trip. Me? Tired? Show me a dragon to slay, a mountain to climb. I'll show you a staircase to climb. Or do, would you please show the gentleman to his room? Be a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Salazar, perhaps you'd like to rest before dinner? Uh, perhaps later. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment? Yes. That ranch hand who was just here, what's his name? Uh oh, uh, Walt Tompkins or Thompson or something like that. I'm afraid something like that isn't good enough. I'd appreciate if you'd find out everything you can about him and about every other worker on the ranch. Well, may I ask why? Please understand. A man like the senator, wherever he goes, whatever he does, the nature of his office, his responsibilities, goes with him. They follow him. But that isn't all that follows him. Personal enemies, threats against his life. There is right now a threat against the senator's life. And we have reason to believe this time there'll be an attempted assassination. Oh, that's difficult to believe. Judd is so revered, so loved. And hated and feared, like all men in positions of power. Think of his life. A gunman, a town tamer, a lawman, United States Marshal. Think of the men that he has caused to be arrested the dozens that have died under his guns. <laughs> Not so easy being a living legend, is it? I advised him against this trip. He insisted. You're his best friends. He loves you. I think he feels safe with you. I hope and pray he's right, because his life is in your hands. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, if you will show me to my room. Certainly. Yeah, that's enough. Yes, I...